Hello, how are you? This is the result so far of uh, my journey in getting this library finished. The office is mostly done. Uh, there are no pictures up yet. There's, you know, a couple of plants that I, you know, took from other areas of the house. I, I have a lot of plants. Um, I inherited quite a few plants and I kind of grow my own plants and especially the last couple of years I've been really getting into the whole gardening and um, and propagating in you know indoor plants and I was I was a total black thumb like you know five years ago or something but but now I'm actually able to understand plants and their needs and be able to grow them so I think that's super but yeah this is kind of um, the background I'm gonna call it for right now of course things will change as you know I keep filming videos, we'll probably go in different areas of the office as they get completed. Um, so along with pictures, I'm waiting on um, a chair to show up with an ottoman, which I'm so excited about. I got it from Birch Lane. Oh, it's so gorgeous. It's just so gorgeous. I can't wait. Um, and then, you know, I'm just going to kind of style the rest of the bookshelves. But these are um, several books that I've read recently and things that are on the TBR. And then these are just some collections I have, and I've had this typewriter now for a little while. And um, it's just an old typewriter I picked up for like $15, but it works. They had no idea it worked, and I knew it worked. So I was like really, really happy to pick it up. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just fabulous. This was years ago though. I will show you kind of some more clips of, um, you know, the process of getting here how it looked before and now the after. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let's do a really quick book haul because I said I'd do one and it's going to be relatively short but I am kind of excited about this because uh, quite a few of these are actually on the TBR. A couple are not um, but and then there's a couple here that I got as trophy books which I'm just excited to share with you. And I think there's a couple on here that will end up on my, my TBR um, as things progress. But I did try to leave some room uh, after kind of scheduling out my year. I tried to leave, leave some wiggle room so that I could add in uh, more books as I, as I completed things. So I went to Half Price Books and got Perfume, um, The Story of a Murder. And this looks really cool. The slums of 18th century Paris, a baby is born and abandoned, passed over to monks as a charity case. But the monk can find no one to care for the child. He is too demanding and he doesn't smell the way a baby should smell. In fact, he doesn't have a scent at all. This is a man that grows up with an incomparable sense of spell, smell. And he ends up living only to decipher the odors around him, the complex swirls of smells. Ashes and leather, rancid cheese, fresh baked bread, and that is Paris. He apprentices himself to a perfumer and quickly masters the ancient art of mixing flowers, herbs, and oils. So I'm really interested in this because it seems like a guy who is, you know, into the perfume trade and how all of that uh, kind of has to do with murder. I'm really interested, or, or a murder, I'm really interested how all of that unfolds. And I've heard that this is an interesting one. So looking forward to perfume. Then also from Half Price Books, I went and they had a bunch of these really cool chill turns for half price. So these were like only 15 or $17 a piece. So this is a trophy book edition of Wuthering Heights and uh, I you know I'm I think I really really enjoyed the book I think I am going back to it again really soon I've uh, I've talked about that in my Wuthering Heights it wasn't really a video it was more just kind of spitballing it wasn't you know structured in any way shape or form it was just kind of my raw feelings on this book and this book is all about raw feelings. So I want you to read it, read it, read it, read it. It's excellent. Um, and it's just, it's just crazy. The whole book is crazy and it's just crazy good. So please read it. Then I was also excited. They had Jane Eyre and look at this. Isn't it so, so pretty? 
it's so pretty. I love the choice of the flowers on here. I mean, I think it's a moon flower, if I'm not more morning glories, which kind of fits Jane, Jane Eyre too. To a hilt, I think, to the best flower they could have chosen. And these little, I mean, the additions are, are kind of small. The books are not huge. The prints, you know, the prints are a little on the small side. Um, and I have to say, getting, getting a little older, it is getting harder and harder to read, you know, smaller print. But they have the gold on the outsides, which is very cool. They have the little ribbon bookmark inside of the books too, which is, I love, I love little books like that. And then the binding is really tough. It's hand, it's not hand stitched probably, but it is stitched and then glued. And then the covers are really hard. Now, I'm not sure what they're using for it. Probably a, um, a really good cardboard, I would imagine, but they make it look so good. They make them look so pretty and they emboss all this and it's just so colorful. So, and you know, here's Wuthering Heights, for instance. I think these are, they look like cherry blossoms. So, you know, they're just, they're just gonna look so nice together sitting on the shelf, I think. They're just, they're just so beautiful. But yes, both of those, and I think Jane Eyre is actually my favorite so far, like my favorite book that I have ever read, maybe. But we will see how that changes over time, won't we? So I then went to, what was the name of this book? It was in Kansas City. It's called Prospero's Books. It's in a section of Kansas City called Westport. It's actually by, let's see, 39th Street and Westport uh, Road area. So if you're familiar with Kansas City at all. And I picked up a couple of books from there that I was actually lucky to find because the gal at the bookstore said that they don't ever hang on to classics uh, very long because people just buy them up. So here are the ones I actually got. Uh, E.M. Forrester's Where Angel Fears to Tread. A little beat up, but it's not bad. Um, I was happy to get it because I'm also uh, reading E.M. Forrester's uh, Room with a View right now. And um, I'm hoping that this will be uh, just as good as A Room with a View uh, is so far. It's, it's really nice. So I, uh, I am looking forward to that. Then I got Tulip Fever, and I'm going to be reading this in April. And I saw the movie um, several years ago. The movie was really good, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm really hoping that the book will be you know, better or just as good. And then I'm also going to partner read this one with another book about the tulip trade and the, the title of it is escaping me right now, but if I remember it, I will, I will put it down here somewhere so that uh, you know the name of it. But it's kind of an explanation of the tulip trade in its time, uh, the 16th century, I think. And so I think that that will be a really interesting pairing to read those together, just to kind of give more context to what's going on in the novel. Then I also picked up Beloved by Toni Morrison. And I don't know too much about this one, but it's, been, it's on a lot of people's lists as being very good. Um, I've seen it recommended multiple times on YouTube. So I am very interested in reading Beloved at some point. It's not currently on my TBR, but it's one of those that I will be adding into probably um, as things go along and I have space, and, uh, like gaps in reading to, to fill. And then Elizabeth Gaskell's Wives and Daughters. This is the Penguin Classics but it, edition, but it's also the Exxon Mobile Masterpiece Theater edition. So when I saw this, I wasn't really sure if it was a good addition to pick up or not. And I'm gonna look up if it's been abridged or not, but I don't think it has. I think it is, if, especially if Penguin published it. And I think that they usually say if it's been abridged or not on the covers or within, uh, within the first couple of pages. 
but I'm excited to dig in to this as well because I have really not read any Elizabeth Gaskell and I've heard it's very good. I know I've watched North and South. Uh, I think it was a, was it a PBS one, North and South? It was really good. And I'm interested in reading North and South and also Wives and Daughters. So anyway, that is my short little book haul. And um, I'm actually trying to not buy as many books right now. Maybe later in the month I will because, you know, I had to pay for getting all of this finished. And uh, I mean, it was totally worth it. Totally, absolutely worth it. I love it, love it, love it so much. So anyway, um, the rest is just some more content and context behind getting the, uh, the, the library situation, the office finished. So I hope you enjoy that. Okay, this is an update on the progress so far. We have bookshelves in, flooring in. Got one, two, the desk, the antique desk is gonna go in here. We also have brand new light fixture. I think I showed that the last one, last clip. And then this door, everything's been painted also. So everything is nice and freshly painted. This is the little nook area. I'm going to put a nice chair in there, an ottoman maybe. Then my desk uh, that I work at will be right over here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this piece yet. Um, it has some uh, shelving on it as well. So I may stick that somewhere else in this room or I may put it somewhere else in the house. And then, let me turn on the light. We have three shelving units in here. And there was enough space that along the wall here, there is a gap. So I'm not sure how to fill that gap yet. I may just put some um, some plants in here and everything. Uh, just to, I don't know, fill the gap. Or I might use that for some kind of funky storage area for just tall stuff. But yeah, this, this is the room. He also put in um, a shelf up here so I can, you know, put some plants or or whatever up there, some kind of interesting decorations. And this is the light fixture we chose for in here. So those can be moved around. And then this is kind of how it looks from in here. So I think I will be getting a chair for this area as well and put it in the corner and maybe another little ottoman. And then I can do some filming and stuff in front of the, the big bookcases over here. Or I may even do filming in front of these bookcases here. So, super duper excited about the progress so far. And uh, I think that's it. Hi, I'm back. My shelves are in. So this is the longer kind of extension part of this room. Um, this is the main office space in here. And then, um, Along this wall, we were able to fit in three of the shelving units from Ikea. These are the Billy bookcases. And what was really cool is that I had uh, my contractor go ahead and attach them really well to the wall. And he also um, cut the baseboard so that it would line up with the notches that are in the back of the Billy bookcases to go along with your baseboard. Something to keep in mind if you ever do get the Billy bookcases is that the baseboard that they make it to fit with is three inches. I actually have a four inch baseboard so we had to cut um, down my baseboard just a little bit where it attaches but otherwise it looks totally fine. You, you wouldn't even notice unless um, you were the person that actually installed these or you just knew. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put the shelves in and I have measured out exactly where I like them for right now. I'm going to leave the spaces where you can insert the metal um, I'm going to call them prongs, but I don't know what the technical term is for them. Um, the metal shelving holders in. Um, and I'm going to leave the spaces for right now just in case I need to make some adjustments later. 
Um, but once I get them where I like them and they're going to be permanent, then I'm going to go ahead and, and fill them in. Um, and I think people do that either with, you know, like uh, a putty or some kind of a silicone, uh, maybe not silicone, but you know, the filler um, stuff that you put on construction sites all the time, that's silicone construction stuff. And um, get those filled in, smooth them out, and you'll never ever notice them. And then one thing that we did mess up on was these attaching like grommets, you know, the things that kind of twist inside to hold everything firmly together. We didn't know that they could be flipped up to where you don't see them, but I don't think it's a big deal. So I'm just going to paint over them with some white paint. And again, I don't think unless you're really looking, unless you're being really critical, you'll ever really notice. So. Anyway, I'm just going to film myself uh, getting this stuff together, so stay tuned.
dog helping me. He's quite a dog. One, two, three. Ikea gives you the perfect amount of these little bracket things. Yeah. They look like that. You can't lose any. <laughs> if you try and do this, you can't lose any. Or you're sunk. Of course, I'm sure at this being Ikea, they sell these little brackets. And they probably even sell the shelves separately too, if you wanted to add more shelves in between than what comes with the actual kit itself. But I've known them for actually, I've known them for actually putting in a few extra pieces just in case. Four, five, six. Eight, nine, ten. Maybe that's just my experience with Ikea though. I don't know, what do you guys think of Ikea? Good, bad, indifferent? I think they're great for just everyday things that you use. Like, you know, little utensils and some of the bedding's okay. Um, things that you're going to use all the time that are just going to kind of get beat up anyway. But this was the most in budget uh, shelving units that I could buy and they weren't from Walmart and the Billy bookcase I knew was pretty popular and they do, they, they're pretty rugged, they do last. And I had, like I said earlier, my, my contractor go ahead and just attach them to the wall very securely. They're not going anywhere. This is probably the house that I'm going to live in for the majority of the rest of my existence anyway. And so I didn't think it would be an issue just to, you know, have them here. I'm never going to move these bookcases. In fact, if we ever do sell this house, then the person that will get it will get the bookcases and, you know, it'll just be like it is. And maybe they'll want to rip them out. Who knows? I hope not because I spent a lot of time trying to do this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's, that's the bookcases. Let me uh, take the camera off the, well, here, I'll just pick it up. That's easy. I just pick it up and just kind of do that. So that's that's the bookcases themselves. And then right, let me flip this around. We'll go into the. Of course, I have my helper. He's very helpful right now, right, Rufus? Let's see if I can step around him here without like falling on my butt. Ah. I have to adjust this. Okay. Tripod's a little bit big. So, here's the other bookcases. The two that are in. And they're exactly the same height. Um, as far as the shelving goes, it's all the same on all of those. And then I have that guy over here. And then we have our desks still kind of where they are. The good thing is, especially with the, the Billy bookcases, there's kind of a gap um, if you attach them directly to the wall without the backing. There's this little bit, I don't know if you can see it. Ah, let me go up here. There's this little bit of a gap in the wall. So if you have um, wires for anything you want to put on the shelves, like I want to put, th these are not going to be the speakers that are in here permanently. These are the speakers that um, we've had for a long time, but we're gonna get some different ones. But if you have speakers that you'd like to put on the shelving along with your books and have a nice little sound system in here, um, then you can just fish those wires through that back gap and down um, 
past the um, the floor molding and you can uh, have everything hook up directly to the computer that way and kind of hide the wires. So I was pretty excited about that. So I guess I guess that's about it so far. Um, I will let's see I, I've got to get books and I got to start putting the books on the shelves and I got to figure out how I want to organize the books. And if I show you how I figure out like what system I'm going to do um, with my bookcases, more than likely alphabetical order by author. And I'm just going to decide, you know, where the fiction books are going to go, where the nonfiction books are going to go. We have a ton of like art books. Just our family has a, a ton of art books. We have a ton of art history um, and design books because, I mean, that's what, that's what we do. Um, my, hus my husband does that kind of work. Um, his mother did that kind of work. She did a lot of folk art, actually. Um, so we have a lot of books on folk art, which is interesting. But, um, but yeah, so I'll just try and get all that figured out and then I'll bring you guys along for the ride. So, bye for now. Hi. Okay, so this is kind of uh, what we're looking at so far after putting in the shelving. And then I have added um, books to this. So this is the little room that's off to the side, off of the main office. So I'm trying to decide how I want to split this up. I'm going to kind of have a small system going so far. I think the individual authors that I have a lot of books from, I'm going to end up kind of grouping those together. Um, I don't know, maybe in separate places, but as the collection further grows, of course, they're going to be, you know, kind of more uh, in with the rest of the, the books. So um, fiction, I have... Uh, Murakami, and then I've got Kurt Vonnegut here, and then I have the fiction books. Um, this is kind of things I have read, have not read. Uh, most of this stuff is uh, from the TBR list. These are kind of collections down here, so I have a Jane Austen collection, um, Arthur Conan Doyle collection of Sherlock Holmes, this is an American uh, Poems collection here. The complete uh, Edgar Allan Poe, complete works of Shakespeare, and um, the portable library of Oscar Wilde. And then in a couple other places, like on this shelf, um, probably kids' books. This is um, some manga that I hung on to because Azumanga Daio was my favorite manga because it's hilarious. And then uh, there's going to be some further non-fiction books on the lower shelves. Um, there's uh, Bibles, Oxford um, Annotated Bible, and then a couple of uh, uh, titles by Richard Dawkins and Greg Epstein. And then I've also got a Hero with a Thousand Faces down here, which is one of my favorites. And then um, a couple of other mythological books down there. And, um, and also I'm trying to figure out the styling. So I've got, you know, a plant here for right now. I actually have a plant up along um, one plant right now just to put those up uh, in the corner. I'm probably going to add a couple more plants in. I have um, this typewriter that we've had for a while. I think I mentioned it already. I also have the box for the typewriter, but um, I don't think that I will display the box for the typewriter, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. And then, you know, it gets kind of interesting bookends. I have other interesting bookends that I need to bring in here, too. This one's kind of dusty, actually. Ooh. Um, and they're just kind of trinkets, knickknacks that I find around the house. I'm also going to put in here just to make it more interesting. Um, so this, this is it so far. Let me grab the camera and we will uh, maybe do a little bit more of a tour so far of the completed um, shelving units. Um, out in the office, I think I'm going to put the design books and more work-related material. So I think I've got most of those in their areas right now. And I'm undecided on where to put the art books. I think 
Art is not a part of my personal job right now, but I did study it in school as art history major, so I uh, have a lot of that out there. So yeah, hold on one second and we'll, we'll go over to those shelves. All right, so this is the office side, and this is the bookshelf on this side. I love the cat, isn't he cute? I keep trying to find little things to put on the bookshelves to, to style them. Um, these are my art history books and work-related books, Records and Information Management and uh, Library and Information Science. Lots of good illustrations in those books, and that, most of those are really big and heavy, so I have to like keep them on the bottom shelf. And then there's a desk, my husband's desk. And then here we're going to be putting more of the design books that belong to his mother and also to him for that. So if, if there's a lot more design books out in the storage unit, so they, they're going to end up on those shelves there because they're really big and heavy. And they also might end up um, going along the bottom in here. But we'll see what we've got to deal with. But anyway, um, this is this is it so far. Um, I have more books out in storage too. I just have to get to them. They're a little bit difficult to get to, but everything's dusty too, and I have to dust it off. It really sucks. So not only are they heavy boxes, but they take a while to dust off. And then I kind of put another little, uh, just an old chair I've got here, and then an old. Um, makeup table that I used for a long time and then that bench that we've had in here for a while I think I'm gonna get it varnished because there's a, a painting on it that his mother painted oh sorry drug something there and it's like of Noah's that light is glaring right there it's of Noah's Ark it's just a really cute thing so I want to get that varnished so it doesn't get hurt um, anyway I think I think that's it then. Love the progress so far. Yay. Okay guys, thank you so very much. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you in the next vlog. It's probably going to be my best of 2022. I'm a little late to the party, so please excuse me, but thank you so much. Bye-bye.